Good evening, everyone. Thanks to everyone for coming this evening. Um, great lineup so far this evening. Buffalo Skinners, that's what can we say about it. Absolutely brilliant. Woo! So far, they're absolutely unbelievable. So really looking forward to it. Um, just myself and Niall, just with thanks to everyone for coming. I know some people have travelled a long distance, some people have come from Tipperary, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> um, where else is everyone else come from? Where? where did Tony come from, lads? <laughs> um, no, just thanks to everyone for coming, lads. I mean, this is a band we love. This is our way of saying thank you to them. Um, Tony has came over. He saw what was going on. He liked what we were doing. He was impressed. So this is Tony's way of saying thank you to us as well. So um, <laughs> without further ado, that's I'll hand you over to Tony now. Myself into. <laughs> um, let me start off by saying what an absolute pleasure it is uh, for myself in particular and also Claire, my partner, to come over to uh, your fair isle. It's a beautiful place, it's somewhere I've always loved coming. And when I first saw that, that great big green poster go up saying that this is going to happen tonight, I just had a very strange sensation thinking, I need to be there but I didn't realize why. I needed to be here because I don't think anybody from this band that you're celebrating tonight has ever really, in sort of physical term, come to say thank you. Thank you for supporting what was a great, great band. It's a, it seems a bit magnanimous to say that we're a great band from somebody who was in the band, but I've always considered the, the band a great band, purely and simply. I don't think there was anybody like us. We didn't do what everybody else did. Tonight I'm seeing that people can do what we did. That's a bit of a worry. <laughs> but uh, it's still brilliant to, to, to be able to sort of come and just express this sentiment to you guys and also for the people who are not here, uh, but who still support the band in various ways. I do know that there is a band out there still called Big Country and they're still doing what they need to do. Um, it's just that I don't need to do it anymore. Uh, that sort of stopped for me when Stuart passed away and to me there was another life to lead. Um, we've always left the records behind, there's, there's videos there for people to see and we've got new things like YouTube and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm 60 years old, this is why I'm talking like this. <laughs> And, you know, the, the, the band will never die. The, the, the band's music will always be there in its original form and in, its, in all its glory. Um, and to have people like yourselves doing tributes in the way that you do, I can only feel flattered, absolutely flattered. Um, so coming here was just to say this to you. Um, coming all the way from Cornwall was not a chore to do this. It was absolutely something I've really looked forward to. But... Um, I think <laughs> the one thing I learned was that the band taught me a lot and uh, I learned a lot about the music business, I learned a lot about writing songs, I learned a lot about being honest with your thoughts and your dreams and ambitions and in 2012 I stopped everything I was doing to realise those dreams and ambitions because what I, was got, what I got myself into wasn't what I wanted. I got into it because other people wanted it. Um, back in 2009, Bruce wanted to get the band back together again and because I loved Bruce dearly, I decided to do it no, knowing full well it wasn't something I wanted to do. So I only lasted three years to do it. But I kind of always wondered what I was going to do next because I don't know if any of you know I've been teaching since 2002. I decided I wanted to put something back into an industry that's given me personally so much. And over those 12 years I was teaching, I was 
realizing that I couldn't actually teach what I was doing because what I was doing was completely and utterly unique but I could show them a way, away from the things that I've learnt, how to re make records, how to write songs, how to look after yourself in the business. And I learnt all these things through my experiences with Big Country. But at the end of the day, I'm still a musician. I'm still somebody who writes songs. I'm still somebody who has a passion for creativity. And uh, I realised um, after I left this sort of remodelled Big Country that I needed to do something that was brand new. Something that was about me. I've always worked for other people. I've had the greatest of pleasure of working with people like Lenny Henry, Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey, The Pretenders. I've worked with all these amazing people, including Big Country. But I've always worked for them. I've always been part of them or worked for them. So I need to do something myself. And um, it wasn't until I moved in with my partner sitting in her back garden I found myself writing lots of songs and songs that didn't have a destination and it was really liberating feeling so I started recording them and I started to record them all by myself I've done projects before that I've done myself but they were just me testing out my ideas but I've written something now that I really feel as though I'm going to be pushing the boundaries of what I do with the big country spirit behind it. So sometime towards the end of this year, I'm going to be releasing an album. The album is written on my chest. It's my time. This is my time. I'm 60 years old. I've done a lot in rock and roll. I've done a lot in rock and roll, but I've never done it for myself, so I'm going to be fucking selfish. So, sometime towards the end of this year, my time will come out. I'm going to engage myself in this newfangled music industry thing called crowdfunding through a company called Pledge Music. So, sometime in the near future, I'm going to start a campaign. I'm going to try and have lots of lovely things that you can buy so I can get your lovely money, so I can put a band together, so I can promote this album, I can get out and tour, and I can do everything that I rightfully know that I can do as a musician and somebody who was in a great rock and roll band. Um, Tell me your band. <laughs> you need to come audition. <laughs> um, I recorded, well, practically everything myself on this album, but the only thing I can't do, and I really give up, this, I mean, this is the biggest um, uh, admission I've ever made, I can't play drums. I cannot play drums. The auditions start in three months' time. So uh, I, I got um, a student who I taught a few years back, who's a drummer, to come and play on a couple of tracks. I got my drummer from my legendary North Devon band called Dogs or Gods. He came and did some drums for me. But the big moment, I got Marky back. Yeah. I got Marky back. <laughs> We're brothers. Always have been, always will be. And to, to have him back in the recording studio playing my songs was just the best ever. So this album's going to come out and I really can't wait for you to hear it, but you're going to have to wait a little while. When the pledge campaign comes up, please, I think another Irishman said this, send me your bloody money. Because <laughs> this album means a lot to me. It means a lot to my family because it's about them. It's about all the people I've loved, all the people who've made my life what it is. It's called my time because it is now my time. It's about my time as being a human being, but it's about what I do now. And that's all going to kick in. Just to bookend that, and I use the word book profoundly here, I've written a book as well. I decided that because when I left the band in 2012, that, and I never really answered people's questions about why I left, and it's purely because I just didn't want to. I wasn't in the mood. It wasn't something I really wanted to bleat about. But I realized it had to be discussed. 
So I've written a book about my life since Stuart's departure up until now. And again, the book is called, oh fuck it, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> it's called Then Came the Great Divide. So that'll come out at the same time as the pledge, so you can buy the book and I'll get your money and I can get my band and I can get on tour and I can do all the kind of things that I want to do. And, uh, but I think, and I hope you don't think I'm being too sort of big, big for my boots for saying this, I was part of a big country tradition, I want to carry it on. So uh, I'm really up for answering a few questions because I know that um, Angle Park are itching to get on and show me what they can do. Oh, can I just say it's very weird watching other people playing songs that were a very big part of your life. It's strange. I've never seen it before and uh, I'm really looking forward to Angle Park guys doing the same. Looking forward to it. No pressure. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to ask me a question, can I ask you to come up so I can hear you and then I'll answer? With only about five minutes, I want to keep everybody from there. So, questions? Hi. Uh, what advice would you give to a musician who's always looked up to yourself and played your music with the blues and then meet you? And he's about to play your music. He's absolutely wrecking himself. Help me out here. What would I do? <laughs> Listen, um, I've always been. A, I'm going to answer your question here sort of very respectfully. I've always heard the comments that sometimes Stuart Adamson and myself are a bit po-faced about how we talked and sort of discussed things. It's only because the things that we do, we do believe in and sometimes that comes across a little bit too serious. But the one thing that I've learned from teaching is that if you want to do something, the only person who's going to make it happen is you. And then everybody has to stand up and respect you for it. And if they don't, then fuck off. <laughs> Excuse me, madam. I apologise for my language. That's really bad of me. She can teach you. Sorry, sorry. The music industry is kind of gone quiet. How about in the 76, 77, 78, the punk revolution happened? Is there a way back for the I don't know. I think two people are absorbed in their little pieces of, of technology they have in their hand to even sort of acknowledge that other people are around them and take part in this sort of the, the wonderful art of discussion and talking and all that kind of stuff. I mean, being in a group is about people coming together and joining forces and, and bringing everything that they have into the mix to produce what they want to do and I can only say that from personal experience but how groups do it in this day and age I don't know because there's no well I can only talk from England there's no venues and if you do want to play in a venue you've got to pay so they take money off you before they give you money I mean that's just prohibitive that's not going to happen that's not going to help you bands so what I always say to the little kids that I see and come into contact with, you know, even if you just play in your front room or play in the garage or go to your nearest youth club, go and make your noise there. Absolutely. And then that's the only way that you can hear yourselves and make yourselves heard by others. Because who knows who walk past that street, somebody will hear you. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But persevere. Yeah. I'll say one more question. No. <laughs> I promised my uh, my partner that I won't sing. Oh, you don't sing. No, thank you. Um, well, I'm not going to take up much of your time. Um, it's a pleasure being here, but you know I don't want to be the centerpiece to this thing. But as of Monday, if you go on to www.tonybutlertv.co.uk. You will see a brand new website that I've put together 
and there's some lots of great stuff on there, some fantastic pictures of me and my various haircuts over the years, and just lots of stuff about what I'm doing. So I'm kicking off a whole sort of social media thing with my own website. I've joined Twitter for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh my God. I've never realized how being old is so hard when it comes to technology. I mean, I've, I've tried tweeting and stuff, and the only thing that flew was my phone. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Twitter. Uh, I'm going to have a new Facebook page. So, but I'll, what I'll do is I'll stick a, a, a big thing on my, my own page and let you, all, you guys know it's all up and running. Um, please come, because I, I, I'm in control of my own website, which is cool. I can put what I want up when I want, so I can try and keep it interesting for people, let things know, let you know what's going on. But I'm determined to get a band together, I'm determined to go out and play this album, and I'm determined to come back to Ireland. Yeah.